Let us now understand the accounting entries and the concept relating to call-in arrears. Now many a time what may happen is that you may call for let's say rupees 10 per share from 100,000 shares. Okay? And there were, let's say, four shareholders each of whom has subscribed 25,000 shares each. Okay? So he subscribed 25k, he did 25k, he did 25k and he did 25k. Together they were 100,000 shares. Now the company called called for second and final call of rupees 4. Now one, two, three paid but the fourth guy didn't pay up. Okay, so if this fourth person did not pay up, how many people paid up? One, two, three. How many shares were they holding? 25,000 received on 25,000 into 3 is equal to 75,000 shares. Price or rather call per share. So what I receive is I multiply these two, I got 300,000 from them. And what was due from them? Due was all of them taken together, which is 1 lakh shares into 4 rupees. So what happened was that what I had to receive was 4 lakh. What I received is 3 lakh. So there is a difference of 1 lakh which is not received. Not received. This amount which is not received even though it has been called by the company is known as call in arrears. So you made a call from the shareholders. Now this call in arrears can also include the allotment money. It's not necessary that it has to be a call. Even allotment money if not received is referred to as call in arrears. So it's a call that the company has made in arrears. Arrears means which is still receivable. So in this case, what entry will you make? The first entry of course, at the time of making the call will be second and final allot call account debit 400,000 because this is what was receivable to share capital account okay now when I receive I got bank account because I got checks worth rupees 300,000 I will debit calls in arrears account debit 100,000 second and final call account because that's where I had debited this right so this call in arrear will remain in the books till the time you receive money when you get the money you will debit the bank account and credit the calls in career account okay by let's say you get this entire money of 100,000 
So that's the way you basically account for calls in arrear.